Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. We resume our discussion about the pulmonology topics. In the previous video, we have talked about alveolar arterial gradient, also known as the AA gradient. Today, we'll talk about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis. Lots of carbon dioxide in the system, you get acidosis. Less carbon dioxide in the system, and you get alkalosis. With that being said, now let's get started. First, let me answer the questions of the last video. Number one, a subject is decreasing his respiratory rate to seven breaths per minute. Okay, what is the AA gradient? Is it normal or widened? Now, is the problem here in the lung? No, it could be in the brainstem. So the answer here is normal. A person decided to climb Mount Everest. Okay, this is, this is a high altitude, therefore less oxygen in the atmosphere, but the lung is normal, the AA gradient is normal. The patient has pneumonia. The lung is abnormal, the AA gradient is widened. The patient has interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, the lung has a problem, the AA gradient is widened. A patient is a strict vegan with neurological problems. This is probably vitamin B12 deficiency. Now this can lead to anemia, which is a hemoglobin problem, but the lung is normal and the AA gradient is normal. A patient is taking nitroprusside for his hypertension and lidocaine spray for some throat pain. He presents with shorts of breath, dark colored blood, and dusky colored skin. This is met hemoglobinemia. The hemoglobin is stupid, but the lung is normal and the AA gradient is normal. By the way, now you can get some of my premium videos which are not available on YouTube. Please go to patreon.com slash medicosis and click on premium videos. Now, let me answer the case of the previous lecture. 29-year-old male patient was brought to the ER after a terrible motor vehicle accident on the autobahn. He was hemodynamically stable in the first few hours, thanks to the marvelous efforts of the trauma surgeons. 24 hours later, he became delirious and short of breath. Vital signs are significant for tachypnea and tachycardia. Physical exam detected many pinpoint areas of hemorrhage over the patient's chest and upper extremities. Many mental status exam is 13 over 30. An ABG and emergency x-ray were ordered. Which of the following is expected on the ABG? Please pause. Okay, first what's the diagnosis? This is a car accident. He was stable at first. But then delirium and shorts of breath. Okay, tachycardia and tachypnea. Woo! Pinpoint areas of hemorrhage over the chest and upper extremities and deterioration of the many mental status exam. This is probably, guys, fat embolism. How do you know? I know it because it's a car accident on the autobahn which has no speed limit, so probably there is long bone fracture. And then his, he became unstable with tachypnea and tachycardia, delirium and short of breath, so you might guess there is a problem in the lung, duh. And then pinpoint areas of hemorrhage over the patient's chest. This points directly to fat embolism. Which of the following is expected in the ABG? Here's your freaking alveolus with the big A, alveolar oxygen. And here is your freaking artery with the small A, arterial oxygen. Now the problem here is in the artery. Let's add a fat embolism here. Now, gas exchange is not going to happen, baby. Oxygen from the alveoli is not going to end up in the artery because there is an obstruction called fat embolism. This will decrease the P small a O2, which makes B the correct answer. Normal PO2, shut up. Low pH happens with acidosis. If he is short of breath <sighs> with hyperventilation, you're washing out the CO2, you get alkalosis and not respiratory acidosis. Okay, high P, small AO2, shut up, it's low. Normal oxygen saturation, no, if the, the P, small AO2 is low, oxygen saturation is gonna be low because oxygen that's on the hemoglobin first came from oxygen which was dissolved in the arterial blood. So if this is low, this is gonna be low. It's no question about it. Two, which of the following is the most likely to be seen on x-ray films? Please pause. And the answer is C, fractured femur, because it's a long bone. This is the source of the terrible fat embolism. Three, what is the expected AA gradient? And the normal reference is 5 to 15. Please pause. And the answer here is first, is the problem in the lung? Yes, yes, the pulmonary artery is in the lung. Okay, 
So the A grade is going to be widened. If normally between 5 and 15, it's going to be more than 15. So 35 millimeters of mercury is the correct answer. First, let me explain the incorrect answer in number two. Sunburst pattern of swollen bone over the humerus. This is osteosarcoma, onion skinning of the tibia, Ewing sarcoma. Wider mediastinum has lots of causes and I've talked about this about video number two in this playlist called clinically oriented anatomy. Staple sign, this is croup, laryngotracheobronchitis. Thumbprint sign on epiglottis, this is acute epiglottitis. Which of the following is expected to be seen on bronchoalveolar lavage? And the answer here is fat globules because it's fat embolism. Hydrogen ion concentration is proportional to P small ACO2 over HCO3. Or you can do it pH, the opposite, HCO3 over PaCO2. The lung is responsible for the PaCO2. The kidney is responsible for the HCO3. This is carbon dioxide. This is bicarbonate. Ventilation is getting the air into the alveoli. Pulmonary or minute ventilation is different from alveolar ventilation. This is the main or the total ventilation. And this is the alveolar ventilation, which means the total minus the dead space. Hyperventilation will lead to washing out of CO2, respiratory alkalosis. This will lead to decreased ionized calcium, hypocalcemia, leading to tetany, and decreased potassium, hypokalemia, leading to muscle problems and EKG changes, including the famous U wave. And if PCO2 in the alveolus is decreasing, P big A in the alveoli is increasing. They are always the opposite. Decrease CO2, increase oxygen. If P big AO2 is high, P small AO2 is high as long as there is normal gas exchange. Hypoventilation, you're retaining carbon dioxide. You increase the P small ACO2, and there, that's a respiratory acidosis. Okay, if P big ACO2 is retained, it's high, oxygen is going to be low. They are always the opposite, because in the alveolus, oxygen and carbon dioxide hate each other. This will lead to decreased P small AO2 called hypoxemia, one of the causes of hypoxia. And of course, if P small AO2 is low, SAO2 is low because the saturation came from the decrease P small AO2. Just because your respiratory rate is increased doesn't necessarily mean that the alveolar ventilation is increased because you could be just ventilating your dead space like an idiot. How come? You could be hyperventilating, but only the dead space is getting the air. No gas exchange involved because the dead space has no gas exchange. That's why we call it dead space as opposed to the respiratory unit. So pulmonary ventilation is respiratory rate times tidal volume. Alveolar ventilation, you subtract the dead space from the tidal volume and then multiply it by the respiratory rate. Alveolar ventilation is actually the thing that matter, not the stupid pulmonary ventilation. If you have shallow rapid breathing, <laughs> you're washing out the CO2 and you're decreasing the alveolar ventilation, you're just ventilating the dead space. But if you are, like a wise person, deep, slow breathing, <sighs> you're increasing your alveolar ventilation because actually air is going to the alveoli. Causes of respiratory acidosis and alkalosis are the same causes of hypoventilation and hyperventilation. Hypoventilation will lead to retention of CO2 and respiratory acidosis. Hyperventilation is the opposite. It's going to lead to respiratory alkalosis. Causes. The problem could be in the respiratory center. In hypoventilation, it could be trauma, brainstem disease, and most drugs such as barbiturates and narcotics, but not aspirin because aspirin or salicylate actually stimulate the respiratory center. So causes of hypoventilation in the respiratory center, overstimulation by drugs such as salicylate, pregnancy, high altitude, septic shock, and stress. And we have talked about all of this in detail in my video called ventilation, hypoventilation, and hyperventilation. The problem could be in the upper airway. If you're talking about hypoventilation, that's going to be acute epiglottitis. It's going to be croup, obstructive sleep apnea, and obesity. Chest wall problem leading to hypoventilation, kyphosis, scoliosis, kyphoscoliosis, ankylosing spondylitis, and phalaeal chest, which is freaking fatal. I've talked about this in my first video in this playlist called Clinically Oriented Anatomy Part 1. On the other hand, causes of hyperventilation, if you're talking about the chest wall, rib fractures, because when you have rib fractures, you probably have pain, you will hyperventilate, Hyperventilation will wash out the CO2 leading to respiratory alkalosis. Muscle probably leading to hypoamyotrophic lateral sclerosis. 
Guillain-Barre syndrome, phrenic nerve injury, poliomyelitis, which is a lower motor neuron lesion, myasthenia gravis, hypokalemia, hypophosphatemia, botulism, and muscular dystrophy. And also you can have Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. Lung problems leading to hypoventilation, you have obstructive lung disease such as chronic bronchitis, cystic fibrosis, severe asthma, or severe pulmonary edema and ARDS and neonatal RDS. Causes of hyperventilation in the lung, everything that will cause you to hyperventilate, restrictive lung disease, pulmonary embolism, early phase of asthma, and in this case we've talked about fat embolism, okay, very similar, you're hyperventilating. Early phase of pulmonary edema, chronic illness, pneumothorax, and mechanical ventilator. Clinically speaking, hypoventilation, you're having respiratory acidosis. By the way, metabolism produces acid. So if you have lots of acid in the blood, you're trying to decrease your metabolism. Your body will force you to stop and calm down to the point of somnolence, stupor, and even coma. Cerebral edema due to vasoconstriction of cerebral blood vessels cyanosis why due to the hypoxemia diagnosis oh i'm sorry clinical pictures of respiratory alkalosis is the opposite you want to increase your metabolism so you're lightheaded and confused and you're shouting and yelling at the nurse and you're crazy low calcium level hypocalcemia leading to tetany and muscle problems due to hypokalemia how to diagnose acidosis clinically and abg how to diagnose respiratory alkalosis clinically and abg treatment don't tell me about curing this problem until you actually find a treatment of the underlying cause. If you are struggling to learn about those bacteria, Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph, Strep, E. coli, all of this crazy stuff, check out this website called Picmonic and the link is in the description below. These are animated visual mnemonics. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get all of my cases and all of my notes organized at patreon.com slash medicosis. And they are organized in Dropbox folders. Also, you can get my premium videos if you go to Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine actually makes perfect sense.